time is running out. Are you ready? Yes. We have a great show lined up. Thank you, Cash App, for the 69 gifted subs. God damn. Poggers, dude. The end of the world is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. You already know this. You already know. I don't need to fucking tell you. The end of the world is upon us. Let's take a look. For you. Like a black cloud. <laughs> Welcome to something more. I'm your host, Bob Duvall, and I'm here with Tom Horn. Now, Tom is a best-selling author, publisher, CEO of Skywatch TV. He's a radio TV personality. Uh, God's using you, Tom, in so many different ways. But I want to go back to when you were in your 20s. You were a new believer, and you, you died? Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, so when I woke up, I sat up in bed. I started to start writing down what I had seen, and it was as if a voice spoke in the room, and it said a single word. It said, Apophis. 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 And I knew that NASA had named an asteroid Apophis. Apophis. And so my first mission, as soon as I got out of bed, went to my computer, turned it on, so I started doing Apophis. Research into the Apophis, Apophis asteroid and the potential for it to strike the Earth in just a bit over nine years from right now. Of all dates, by the way, Friday the 13th, April 2029. 2029. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I love to get my info from people whose uh, claim to fame is dying. So that's kind of scary, Tom. <laughs> Paul, we've had hurricanes on the East Coast and drought and fires on the West Coast all at the same time. Is this one of the ways we know we're in the last days? Absolutely, Jim. You know, and. And then east of the Mississippi, floods. Right. Sinkholes are opening up everywhere. Right. But the Lord told me, right. Jim, two weeks ago, he gave me a word. He said, Paul, I want you to quit focusing on the timeline and focus on the sign line. Because mm. just follow the sign. It'll lead you to the end of the time. Follow the sign. It'll lead you to the end of the time. But... Um, the earth is going to go through a traumatic event. Right. And uh, we got to be ready. That's wow, right. that's yes. right. And we're living in these final days. Oh, but there's And a some lot churches. of people are going to have to adjust their theology by what's going on in the world right yes, now. Yes, because there are some churches that teach, you know, it's just going to get better and better. Better and better. And better. And better. Mm. It ain't going to get better. Yeah. No. I've read the book. This is not one of those summer movies where you can close your eyes during the scary part. The survivalist's Bible, Howard Ruff's How to Prosper During the Coming Bad Year. Some of you may be aware of my fondness for Western art. But in the last couple of years, we've tried to bring its influence to the White House. Like that art, this exhibit can remind those of us who work or visit here what America is all about. If we understand this part of our history and our continuing fascination with it, we will better understand how our people see themselves and the hopes they have for America. This exhibit explores both the reality and the myth of the American West, and both are important. This is not for me, honey. No, I won't. Now, there are a lot of people kind of thinking they're disparaging and doing it, call me uh, today a cowboy. You know, I've never understood what's so bad about being a cowboy. I'm proud of my spurs. In the business I used to be in, that's how you found out who was the hero and who was the villain in the first reel. The good guys wore the white hats. Someone once said that it's easier to understand a nation by listening to its music than it is to by learning their language. And when you listen to country music, you hear the beauty of our wide open spaces, the emotions of a people whose hearts are as big and full as the land they live in, and determined self-reliance. You know, one of the values we're trying hardest to save in this country is self-reliance. Principles like self-reliance, taking care of your own, not looking toward the government for a special leg up or for free lunch. Government is not the solution to our problem. 
Government is the problem. We're encouraging self-reliance again. We got in trouble when we started looking to government for too many answers. That kind of self-reliance is inspiring and a model for our society to follow. Family, self-reliance, and individual freedom. Pride and self-reliance. 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 Self human dignity and independence. Because for too long, too many have looked only to government. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. We're pleased to honor men and women here who uh, I think typify the virtues of uh, both self-reliance and independence self that made this country great. And when you get out west, where these people were raised in most cases, you learn that self-reliance when you're knee high. Self-reliance. And out of that self-reliance self comes the independence uh, that's helped our country in the past and will in the future. And when I say independent, I mean independent. Self-reliance. Apophis. I mean independent. Apophis. Self-reliance. Why do we prep? You know, someone will say, you know, it's an earthquake. It's uh, a tornado is pretty odd. You, know, you live in a tornado alley, you know, you prep for tornadoes. But the thing that could impact us the most, I think number one on my list is the collapse of oil. You know, people will talk about financial collapse. That's another one, that's another one. What about the collapse of everything you buy every day? Don't panic. You know, what gas is left uh, on the streets, I mean, it will be killed for. Uh, you know, those life, on those last days, cars are going to be, you know, people are going to be siphoning gas out of cars for their car. They're not going to be able to see themselves without a car. I'm just throwing it out there, you know. SHTF, you're talking your zombie apocalypse. Your walking dead is going to be people coming to your house and beating you to death to get the gas out of your car. Just saying. It's going to happen. This is the Pelican 1650. I keep this in the back of my Tahoe at all times. The main reason I have this is not only to keep everything organized in one container in the back of my Tahoe, but I also am able to lock this with two padlocks. And then what I also do is take a chain and I run it through one of the padlocks and I chain this down to the frame of my Tahoe. So nobody can just break into my Tahoe and yank this out of there. You know, could the chain be cut with the right tools? Of course, but most just petty criminals don't have that kind of uh, capability. They're just smashing your window and grabbing whatever they can take quickly from my Tahoe. So that's the primary purpose of this is not only organization, but to prevent this stuff from being stolen from the back of my Tahoe. Totally concealed. And he just left and this is safe. And this is half a queen size bed. This cushion. This one's bulletproof. One of the things about being prepared is that you are more free to make decisions based on your abilities and not dependent on others. And that's really the big thing. Being self-reliant self is not depending heavily on others. Just kind of wanted to give people maybe hopefully a wake-up call. Maybe you needed to hear this. The government's not worried about you. The government's not going to help you. They're not going to do anything for you. They're worried about them. So don't, uh, don't, don't ask your government. Don't be questioning why your government isn't helping you. Ask what you can do for yourself. All right, go on down there. Self-reliance. Straighten it up. Self-reliance. Well, when you came in, that camera right there follows you. And then there's another one on the pole. And it's all based off the of ground source radar. The house has uh, behavior recognition and also uh, facial recognition. This is looking down the escape tunnel. And then those are eight cans of pepper spray there. So if it, if it, if the system sees someone that's not a friendly, like an ex-wife or something, it'll blanket them with pepper spray fog. What we're building for is what would be considered a biblical epic 
disaster. Roberts is buying up abandoned nuclear shelters that were built 60 years ago during the Cold War. A thousand people have already signed up with his company, Vivos. Have you ever been to a four-star hotel sitting in the lobby? That's what it's going to be like. And I can guarantee you it's going to be much better than it's going to be on the surface. Vivos is about those events that can be predicted. For example, if it's an asteroid, a we may get years of those. Uh, perhaps a terrorist event has happened. Uh, maybe a nuke went off in London or Paris or New York. It might be a good time to run to your shelter because your city could be next. Well, I got a message for you. We believe that Jesus is coming. We ain't going to come. 2011, May 21, going to take the true believer, the true Christian. And 2021 is going to be the end of the world for the whole human right. You know what I never understand about these guys? Why do they want to fucking live so bad? Like, almost all of them are anti-vaxxers. But the thing I never understand is like, why? why? Like, at that point, why do you want to live so bad? Just fucking die, dude. Like, literally everything sucks. At that point, everything sucks, okay? And especially because, like, most of these people then also change their lives and their lifestyles to fit that, like, shitty uh, world that they predict is going to be, uh, that it is going to look like. It's like, but that sucks. Like, that sucks. That's, like, you're, you're literally cucking yourself right now. You're making your life worse right now for a future that may or may not happen. Or if it does happen, you're not guaranteed to survive it. Trust me. And also on top of that, like, why the fuck do you want to live so bad, dude? Like, in that situation, I mean. It doesn't make any sense. Especially, a big chunk of these people are evangelicals, right? And evangelical Christianity dictates that the rapture is coming. You know, second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes back to earth. He fights in Megiddo, okay, with Satan. And then you're supposed to be sucked up into the heavens regardless if you're a true believer. So deep down inside, part of their brain is like, yeah, man, I don't know, man. I'm doing a lot of such shit, okay? Might not, might not be able to get sucked into the rapture. You know, I need to, I need to you know, stack the deck for, against uh, Jesus there, okay? Radical slap reliance, even against Mega Doo Doo, you know? <laughs> Having a safe cellar a a and a report. safe room in these times is going to be smart, okay? It's very sad to see the United States of America so decisive, but a house divided cannot stand, and we are a Here country divided. So people, a lot of people are worried about the future and their children, so they are preparing for the absolute worst. Okay, over here, this is one of my six machine gun bunkers. And oh, we back Put your on. If you want to have a gun room, put in the shelter, use it as your gun room or your gun vault, and then just go ahead and build the house on top of it. Believe it or not, you can actually put a shelter under the pool before you build the pool. As you can see in this illustration, dig a little deeper, put in the shelter, and build the pool. Dig a little deeper, put in the shelter, and build the pool. Dig a little deeper, put in the shelter, and build the pool. Don't panic. You can do secret passages, you can build the pool. Entrances where the floor opens up, entrances where you literally go to a sliding kitchen counter. You can even have the secret passages where the wall opens up, you walk into a room and you enter down into your bunker. Guys, your imagine is the only limit. There are a lot of people who feel as you do, but who feel that they must arm themselves for whatever eventuality. You have your survivalists and you have your Howard Ruffers, which is what I sort of refer to myself as. Howard Ruff is, is a less far. He doesn't really believe in the gun aspect either. That's a very savage way of thinking. Still, American traditions are largely based on the right to bear arms. In fact, law and order was brought to much of this continent through the firearm. I'm proud of my spurs. The old American West here outside Phoenix, Arizona. 
The kind of a place where only the tough survived. Self reliance. Where the only law was the gun. John Donovan, a soldier of fortune editor. Can you appreciate how some members of the general public might be concerned in some way to see 800 people talking about being prepared, talking about their gun collections, their marksmanship? Certainly. Yeah, I'd be a little skeptical of the results myself. Nobody expects these situations, but when you're talking about life and death, it seems a little bit foolish if you have the chance not to be prepared to be the one that survives. And how do you see the use of a gun fitting into that philosophy? I hope never, but... New here at 10, it's a new survivalist movement. They call themselves liberal preppers. An outspoken liberal, he was never a fan of firearms, but he collected a safe full after Donald Trump became president. And you realize that these people actually hate you. Don't fucking make my toy jam, motherfucker! And build that fucking rock for me! Donald Trump! There'll be more fear on both sides because there's so much division. I do see that the self-reliance self -reliance. movement is going to um, grow as a result of that. Self-reliance. Well, it doesn't matter if you were with her or you were feeling the burn. It does not matter if you listen to NPR or you listen to Rush Limbaugh. Let me welcome you to the world of prepping. <laughs> I think of preppers as being risk assessors and risk mitigators. These are people who play the what if game. What if there's an emergency? What if there's a job loss? What if there's a catastrophic event? And then they try to take precautions to help mitigate that risk, either to eliminate it or help to mitigate it as best possible for, for their situation. So some of the things that you might not think about when you think about uh, preppers are preparing for maybe an emergency phone call in the middle of the night where you need to uh, rush to say an emergency room. Do you have a full tank of gas or do you have to stop by the gas station to fill up? Maybe a job loss. Are you prepared to not have income? What about natural disasters? Are you prepared if there is a flood in your area? What if there's an ice storm? It's possible we could be stuck in our house for three weeks or for three days up to a week, and it has happened. Are we prepared to not have to go to the grocery store because we can't travel on the roads? I wish you success and good health. Let's eat. <laughs> I'm starting to think about having to eat my neighbors. You think I like sizing up my neighbor, how I'm gonna haul him up by a chain and chop his ass up? I'll do it. I'll barbecue your ass flat. I will eat you. Food supplies have been completely wiped out. We have our evacuation of all counties. I report complete devastation. We have a giant squall. There are forces in this world that remind us of how fragile we are. We thought we were safe. We thought it could never happen to us. I asked Mathis the other day what would happen if there was like an EMP attack in North Korea or an earthquake or a zombie outbreak. Do you have a flashlight or potable water? What'd we do? My suggestion was drop 10 bucks on like a wireless radio and stock up on some delicious emergency meals from My Patriot Supply. They taste like home cooking and get a four week supply for just 99 bucks at preparewithben.com. They will even cover the shipping. They'll make sure you're safe, your family's safe. Preparewithben.com, your life might depend on it. First of all, it's important to note, just because, I'm not gonna get graphic here, but just because a nuclear weapon would fall on your city does not necessarily mean that you will die. You are going to still be living without food, without water, unless you go to My Patriot Supply. What's your responsibility as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather? Number one, once you've got your relationship with your creator right, it's to provide, it's to protect your loved ones. Are you ready? Get ready today. Anyway, this is the 72-hour package by, hold on, let me see, My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply. Okay. If you've seen these. Oh, hey, you know what? There's supposed to be four packages in here. 
So there were supposed to be four different packages. Now that pisses me off. So I'm gonna call them out on this. Apophis, Apophis, Apophis. So there's what the SOS looks like. I'm just gonna put them all the way. Oh, that tour. So incredibly fucking stupid. Like, I, I mean, these these hogs that are like Ben Shapiro fans deserve it though. Like, they deserve to buy this dog shit product that they fucking eat. Actually, I kind of want to do a taste test for this. Not gonna lie. Like, I don't know. Hashtag ad, hashtag, uh, the world's coming to an end, folks. Don't eat your neighbor's ass like Alex Jones. Eat the 72 hour, uh, nuggies from, uh, you know, survival of mankind. That's right. Use code name. You use the, uh, use the code. Us and I'll be at, uh, for 25% off at checkout. That's right. Pretty well. There you can get a look at them. So this is the grizzly bear. It is scored. <laughs> let's, let's put the knife away. <laughs> That's another example of not really being prepared when you think you're prepared. Okay, my K-Bar knife, which is my favorite prepping knife, right? If I was out in the wilderness, that's, where, that's the one knife I would want with me. But it's not in my go bag. It happens to be <laughs> in a storage box underneath the love seat in the back bedroom. Now, how is that going to be accessible if I were to need it? And this is kind of an insurance policy. It's better to have this and not need it than to need it and not have it. And I have eaten tuna fish that was eight years. Eight years. Past the date on the can and it tasted perfectly fine. So this would keep me alive and I would be one of the few people to survive. And God said, what will we do? What will you do? Mm -hmm. If these babies are starving. You all believe the, the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse? are riding yes absolutely you Absol believe yeah absolutely how many of you think they're riding <laughs> this is a big sign of the last day the events foretold in the book of revelation are almost around the corner and it's only going to get worse it's time for you to be prepared so call 1-888-988-1588 to start today with your love gift of 500 dollars Jim will send you one gear for you. This offer contains four buckets, which contain 1,100 servings of food to keep one person alive for a year. Year, 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 year. The food prices are going up probably every month almost, it seems like to me. And now when the earthquakes and the volcanoes are going to take place, and they're taking place yes. by the thousands. Yes. Wow, I love that. People, I'm going to scream because you're not listening. <laughs> but you better listen. Yeah. We've been lulled back with so much hell in this country that we just kind of say, oh, well, we'll just have to take it. No! It's, it's like a horror movie. No! Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen, you know, with faces going, ah, People are going to be into horror. No! They're going to be into pain ah. and anguish. No! And I want you to be prepared so that doesn't happen. Wow. This is the most unique survival food. This is 52 <clears throat> servings, turkey feast, emergency no, no. food supply. That's right. Wow. And this that. food is 30 <clears throat> year shelf life food. It is, even has pumpkin pie mousse for dessert. I love pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. I love green bean casserole. I love freeze-dried turkey, real turkey. Mm -hmm. I love pumpkin pie. You know, God's still on the throne. Amen. Amen. So many people think that having a bowel movement once a week or only twice a week is normal. I go over you the do. Uh, Bristol you stool sure chart, do. <laughs> and this is how normal bowel movement should look. What happened with Mary on the gut zone diet? One day she, she came out of the bathroom with her face white. 
She says, oh my gosh. I said, what happened? Oh, you're gonna tell this. She said, I passed a snake, a black snake out of my colon. I said, that's so good. Did you save it for me so I can see it? Uh, no, I flushed it quickly. It freaked me out. I thought I had a tapeworm or something. And I thought that thing was gonna bite me. No! Stick the lid on it. Push down. You have to go in the bathroom. There it is. Now this is something that you know is very useful, especially for you women. Every home preparedness kit should have one of these. This is wonderful. There it is. This is wonderful. Wow, it just pops right open. That's right here, and I can see 360 all the way around. Yeah. There it is. This is wonderful. The whole package is $99. So take them out of the main package and store them in the individual packages under a bed frame. You could probably store up to 100 rolls under a bed. They are exposed again to critters and water if your home has the potential of flooding. So that's another thing to keep in mind. You also will have to have them in some kind of plastic storage to help protect them from those things. Um, this is how I store. Um, there's a spider right there, just so you know. This is how I store my toilet paper. There it is. I have a couple of these. This is wonderful. Um, the place where I keep them normally is covered, but it's exposed to the elements. I left this out here all winter because I kind of wanted to see how good the teepee would hold up. And it looks like it's brand new. If I'm regular, I can get away with just using one, and I can do it in a way that's very hygienic. So I dunk it in water, not even for a half second, and instantly it starts to expand. And I'll tell you what, come on in close here. This is not, um... Oh. What are we doing, boys? In the instance of a natural disaster? What are we doing, boys? Going straight to a white person's house. That's right. If you got one of these yee yee motherfuckers in your neighborhood, dude, hey, hey, let me tell you something. Perhaps the best kind of fucking... I mean, they'd love it too. They'd love this shit. This is what they're like, you know, prepping for. You know they're not gonna fucking, you know, they're they're like probably scared as fuck. They got their guns out. Obviously, make sure it's the white friend that's leading the pack. Uh, that's why I got this. Watch, wait, wait, you wanna know? You know, maybe have like a 30 pack of beer with you. Here, this is what I would do. Roll up like this. Hold on. What's going on, neighbor? Hey, neighbor. Y'all all right out there? Saw a bunch of, uh, saw a bunch of dudes out here in this neighborhood walking around looking, looking bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were black and brown, too. Just want to make sure I'm part of the neighborhood watch. Just want to make sure that, uh, you know, y'all are doing all right. Yeah, I got a 30 can right here. Bud Heavies. Want to make sure we uh, spread the love around. What's my name? Hank. Yep. Hank Pecker. Yeah, I toured. I toured in Iraq, Afghanistan, Korea, too. I want to make sure that uh, I was tactically ascertaining, making sure that you guys are doing all right out here. And then the moment that they fucking come outside, they grab the beers, you know what I mean? Boom! Get in there, boys! Woo! Woo! Yeet, yeet! Left this survivalist kid, have a white lad who composes a chud. That's right. PvP enabled, boys! Let's do it! There you go, dude. Hey, so I'm going to Biden's conference in Sacramento. Anything messaging you want, you want me to heckle him with? No. 
Tell him to keep it up. GMM Jim Baker bucket taste test. Today we take. Oh my god. Okay, let's just keep going with this one for now, but. I ripped it a little bit there. Fragrance free. I love the lady that had like fucking tapeworms, by the way. Like the lady from eating whatever god awful horseshit supplements that she's been eating. Unironically ended up getting like a fucking colon worm or some shit. And she's like, I saw a black snake. I passed it out. I got so excited. I said, Marla, show me the black snake, Marla. That's right. That's why we need horse dewormer, folks. Get them worms out. No added chemicals, hypoallergenic and reusable. Fragrance free. No added chemicals, hypoallergenic and reusable. And reusable. The more water you have on it, the better, of course. If you live in a densely populated city, you cannot count on your water coming out of your faucet. That can disappear in a second. Just scoop it right out of the pool and the Alexa Pure Pro will clean it up perfectly safe. You won't taste any chlorine, you won't get any bacteria, parasites, any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, contaminant that would make you sick whatsoever. When you drink water through the Alexa Pure Pro, it always comes out smooth and sweet. Filtered water from Seychelles to take the poisons away. So it's just, it's just the kettle, huh? That's what, that's what we're doing? And sweet. I like that too much. I guess you'd say, Jim and Lori, help me be prepared today for end times. All these end times, end times. <laughs> Freaks, bro. It's so wild. Entire aesthetic, like, built around dying. Ah, Great song, Kevin. I love that. I love it. Wow. I believe Apophis is carrying uh, an alien microorganism on it in which a virus is being sustained. And I believe it's going to make coronavirus look like a walk in the park. Literally tens of millions of people are dying by the hour, and an international cry goes up around the world for some kind of cure, a vaccine. Well, a man comes forward, a single individual, who happens to be the Antichrist. And he's the only man on earth whose blood is naturally immune to this alien virus. And so, a vaccine is created from his blood, by which all mankind then are required to be inoculated. So it's almost like a, a black communion. The tribulation is not judgment, it's wrath. The wrath of God is being poured out. Can people be saved? Yeah, but it's a horrible time. It's a terrible time to, during the, on the planet. As bad as things are right now for Christians, it's not anything compared to what it'll be like then. So the good news is we've been warned. No one can ever say they haven't been warned. Augustine Farms Funeral Potatoes. While we're watching this video, Funeral potatoes. I want everyone to remind themselves that these motherfuckers have more political power than you ever will imagine. Like, even as a broader leftist collective, let's say, fuck the creed, fuck the uh, ethics, fuck the code of conduct, fuck your uh, background, right? As a community, and as, like, leftist people, as progressive people, we will never have a fraction of the political power that these motherfuckers and their flock have. Just remind yourself of that reality if you want. That's the real doomsday. Is that these fucking psychos who are armed with the doomsday uh, mentality, who literally fucking run around thinking that the world is going to end in any waking moment, Let's not even think about what that does to the psyche of the average person. But dudes run around thinking that the fucking world is ending. 
And they have all the political power. They get to run the country. Even when the Republican Party's losing, they get to run the country. Just add water, and in minutes, you'll be dying for more. I got to see the Ronald Reagan interview that I did, which has never been aired. Ronald Reagan prophesied. What did he say? He you said, would. Jim, if America doesn't change, change turn repent, the repent, the way, way its ways is right now, he said, this could be the generation that sees Armageddon. That's right. I'm trying to show you is not to put you in fear, but you are in the end of the age of iniquity of the Amorite. Praise God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Wad Jesus. Thank you, Ronald Reagan. Oh, thank you, Lord. We're out of time. You need to be prepared. Are you a prepper? Would oh. you call yourself a prepper? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just do something. Just do something. They all look like demons, dude. That's the funniest part. They literally look like, comically look like demons. Like, if there was ever a fucking demon wearing human skin, I'd be like, that, that thing, okay? Whatever this fucking thing is actually looks like a reptilian or a demon or whatever the fuck just looking like a human like trying to look like a human something uh, i guess it's like no one will ever suspect it right like i guess that's what it is <laughs> did you get that piece yeah you did I, i've got an idea for another picture just one more I've got the chainsaw. No, and you're blocking me off. <laughs> Stopping. <laughs> Don't just stand there. You're supposed to be saying, no, I'm not going to start the saw. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right.